So in this video, we're going to be talking about the Microsoft 365 Fundamental Exam and give you a few tips and tricks that's hopefully going to allow you to pass this first time out. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Harry Lauter and I'm a technology strategist for Microsoft. And the goal of this channel is to teach you technology and hopefully show you a few tips and tricks that's going to help you and your organization. So the Microsoft 365 Fundamental Exam, the MS-900, you know, what is it and why would you even do the exam? Why would you sit the exam? And these are good questions. So, you know, what is it? Well, it's a fundamental exam to prove that you know a few things. And one of those is what are the cloud concepts? And that's things like what's infrastructure as a service? what's platform as a service, and then why would a business use private cloud or hybrid cloud or public cloud? So these are some of the things that you'll just have to learn. And then really the, the rest of the kind of objective domain of this exam and the skills that are measured are all around Microsoft 365. So what are the core services? Things like Teams, SharePoint, OneDrive for business. And then, you know, what are the security and trust and privacy features within M365? And then looking at things like how do we price it? You know, what are the different licensing options from enterprise to business? And then down to how does Microsoft support the platform? So I think it's a really exciting all-round exam. It gives you that good base level, you know, whether you know Microsoft 365 today or if you're learning it for the first time. So why would you do it? Well, you might do it because, you know, maybe a job that you're applying for asks this as a recommendation. I did a few, you know, searches on the old internet on, you know, jobs for MS-900, and there were definitely a few out there. Some of them were Microsoft 365 uh, roles, and some of them were uh, pre-sales roles, which, you know, you may be interested in as well. So that's one thing you might be looking to get a new job. Two, it might be a way of you showing your current employer that you understand Microsoft 365. And this might help you get you know, promotions, might help you get you know, better projects and opportunities within your current firm. So I'm really excited about this exam. I thoroughly enjoyed taking it. So you know, let's jump into tip one and, and go from there. So tip one is go ahead and book the exam now. And you might be thinking, oh my God, Harry, this has nothing to do with the MS-900 exam. Well, you know, this is important because what I found from personal experience, if I don't go ahead and book that exam, whether it's one week away, one month away, two months away, well, I don't have a goal then that I know that I've got to get all the learning done and get kind of inspired to do that learning to pass the exam. So, of course, make sure you watch to the end of the video to get any more tips you want. But after this, if this is the exam you want to do, and you've got the, the ability to do so, go ahead and get this thing booked and thank me later because getting it on the calendar is really going to help you get this thing nailed out and get yourself that MS-900 badge on your resume. All right, so tip two is all about learning what the objective domain is. And when we say the objective domain, what I really mean is what is involved in this exam. So what, what are we testing you on? What do you need to learn to be successful? So before you dive down too many rabbit holes of just diving into videos and learning, I recommend you just get grounded with what the exam actually has to cover. So I'm here actually on the MS-900, so the Microsoft 365 Fundamentals main kind of homepage on the Microsoft Learn website. So you can see here, this is navigated to that certificate exams MS-900. So what you can see from here is multiple things, but right now I'm just on the homepage you can read the synopsis about the exam. This is where you can go ahead and get it booked in. But what's really important is this skills measured section. And you can already see here you're getting a high level. You know, what's in it? Describing cloud concepts, describe core Microsoft 365 services, and so on and so forth. But what you're going to want to do is download that exam outline. And once you've got that downloaded, you can really now dig in and see what they're going to be measuring you on. And what you'll see is those different sections. So at the top is the audience profile, who's this example? We've kind of touched on this stuff already. But you can see as we go down, now it says describe cloud concepts. 
And underneath this, it breaks down what exactly is Microsoft looking for. So you can see here, describe Microsoft infrastructure as a service and PaaS, so platform as a service offerings. And as you go down this, you can see there's multiple things, you know, describe core services, productivity and teamwork. And what you want to be thinking to yourself is, okay, well, I'm looking at this productivity and teamwork. Okay, instant messenger, chat, online meetings. Okay, well, what does this really mean? Well, here we're talking about things like Microsoft Teams. And it's up for you to then understand, do you know these different topics? And you, know, you might go down here and think, oh, okay, you know, identify deployment and service methods in Office 365 Pro Plus. And you might think, yeah, I really know this. I've been doing this in my organization. And then you probably don't have to spend too much time learning it. But if things jump out to you, like, oh, workplace analytics, what is that? Well, those are the kind of things that the light bulb should go off that you need to do a little bit of studying around it. And what I often do is I take all these objective domains and I bring them into something like OneNote. And then from OneNote, I kind of lay it out and I put all the things in that the, uh, the skills measured here are asking for. And then I just tick off, I put a little box next to it and tick off whether I think I know it or whether I don't. But it is worth mentioning. I mean, there's different things we can see here. As we go down, we can see security, compliance, trust, 30 to 35% of the exam. And there's all those different options. If I go back here to the main skills measures page, 10, 15, and so on and so forth. What it's worth knowing is this doesn't necessarily mean in the exam, 15% of the questions are going to be on cloud concepts. So these are just kind of guidelines. Everyone's exam is going to be different. So don't, you know, don't get too bogged down on the numbers. Just make sure you have a good foundation of all the different things in this skills measured PDF, and you're going to be absolutely fine. All right. So tip three is all about gathering your resources. And what I mean by that is what are the tools you're going to use to learn M365 to pass this exam? So I'm going to give you the things that I used and I'll talk about some other things that I think could be helpful, but I didn't use myself. But, you know, I still think they're a good recommendation because everyone learns differently. So we're back here on the MS 900 Microsoft 365 Fundamentals you know, main web page. And we're going to scroll down because there's some really important stuff here. So after the skills measured, what you're going to find is a section saying two ways to prepare. And we got the online free and the instructor led paid. But let's talk about the free one first. And this is exactly what I did. So first thing, you know, after I booked the exam and looked at the skills measured, I went to this resource right here, which is our Microsoft Learn. And if you've not used Microsoft Learn before, you're in for a treat. This is all free training online, gives you videos, gives you documentation, gives you quizzes and exams to test out how you're getting on. So you can see here there's multiple different paths. We've got things like 365 productivity and teamwork, uh, Microsoft 365 business management, security, compliance, licensing. And these are all the things that we saw on the skills measured. So this is great. And this is absolutely free. So let's just dive into the top one, for example. And you can see here that when you get in, it gives you an idea of what's, you know, what's to come, what we're learning. But this is really cool stuff. So the first module, what is Microsoft 365? Well, if you're new to it, this is going to be super helpful. Understanding productivity and teamwork. How to engage employees in Stream, Teams, and Yammer. So I'm not going to dive through all of this, but just go ahead and go through this Microsoft Learn course because it is built for you to be able to pass or help you pass this exam. So that's what I did first, and I would recommend you do the same. Next is what I did is I went to Vlad Talks Tech's website, and this blog post in particular is phenomenal. Vlad did a great job, but the main thing that I used Vlad's post here for is after I did that Microsoft Learn course, well, I still felt like I probably had a few gaps. So what Vlad's done here, which is great, is he's taken all the objective domains and he's gone ahead and put little posts and links to different things. It might be a link to an article or a YouTube video. It might be a link to some other article outside of Microsoft. So 
I definitely recommend going having a look at this. Like, for example, if you're like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm still not that comfortable in what Power BI is. You could go to that link and read more about it. So Vlad, you know, shout out to you. Fantastic job. The other things that I'm going to mention on here that Vlad has, because, you know, I don't want to spend too much time in it. But if you're a learner that enjoys reading, you can see here there's links to the MS900 book. So you can go read our exam reference. And Vlad's actually also done, and this is paid for, so this is plural site, but he's also done a bunch of, uh, you know, plural site videos. And if you're not a plural site subscriber, you could get a free trial as well and, and get going with that. So that's Vlad's blog. Definitely recommend checking that out. Something that I did, which I have to call out because this is how I passed as well, is I used the measure up practice exams. And by no means do you have to do this because depending on what you, if you work for Microsoft, this might be free for you. If you don't, this is going to have a charge. You can see here it costs $99. So this isn't mandatory. You don't need this to pass. I'm just one of those people. I love taking practice exams before I dive in, you know, gets kind of gets me going, gets me understanding what the different uh, types of questions I might get. But as I say, this is a paid resource and I don't recommend it for everyone necessarily because you know, it does cost some money and you may not need it. Uh, the last thing I just want to note is that uh, there are trials. So if you're a hands-on learner, which m me, myself, I, I am, you could go get the Office 365 E5 free trial. You could also do the same for enterprise mobility and security. This would just allow you to have a play when you're reading through the documentation or going through the Microsoft Learn, you might want to just put something into practice. So just bear that in mind. So that's really it for this tip. Go gather the resources that you want to go and learn from. And as I say, Microsoft Learn is a great place to start. Definitely go read Vlad's blog and you should be well on your way to earning the badge. So for step four, I just want to give a few more just kind of quick tips, which are just overall exam tips, really. Not necessarily specific to the MS900, but should hopefully help you out. And number one of these is make sure you schedule time for learning. And, you know, you know, I've already told you to schedule the exam, but this is somewhat similar is make sure you put time in your calendar to invest in yourself. So whether that's Friday afternoons, you're going to spend that time learning and doing exam prep. Maybe you can't do it in hours of work. So it's in your mornings or evenings or weekends. Just make sure that you have some dedicated time to do studying and that you know, the people close to you know that this time is protected for studying so that you don't get that broken up by something else. And that's going to be really important to help you get these exams. And that goes with any exam. Secondly is make sure you answer all the questions. I know that sounds so obvious, but, you know, a lot of people kind of get to a question that, you know, they get stuck on and they just click next and then they may run out of time, for example. So don't do that. Make sure you just, even if it, you don't know the answer, have an educated guess and then move on. And then if you have time at the end, come back and spend a little bit more time reviewing those answers. And in any Microsoft exam, you can always flag a question to review later on. And then the next quick tip is just make sure you actually read the question. Um, I know that sounds obvious, but in most Microsoft exams, you know, there's going to be little tidbits throughout it, which are going to help you understand what the answer is going to be. You know, for example, if they're talking about collaboration, then you're probably going to think about teams, you know, don't get kind of carried away in the weeds of a question. And that goes kind of for the answer as well, especially if you're really technical. You know, quite often we can look at an answer and then think of all the different ways that we could do that. Just think high level. So the fundamental exam, don't get too carried away in how you answer things. And then lastly, on the day, just make sure you relax. This exam, there's definitely plenty of time for you to get through the questions and still come back and review them as well. So with that, we've looked at a few things here. Make sure you get your, you know, your exams scheduled in the books. Make sure you know what skills are being measured. Make sure you've got all the different kind of prep and resources that you need to be successful. And that's going to be it. On the game day, just go out there and crush it and earn your badge. And, you know, I look forward to seeing you next week with some more tips. So make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you soon.